Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the Audio Signal Processing for Machine Learning series. This is not only a new video, but it's going to be the last one in the series. So what I'm going to do today is basically show you how you can calculate the spectral centroid and the spectral bandwidth using Libreza. Okay, so let's get started. So here, as you can see, I already fired up a notebook and wrote down like some stuff. So I'm not going to go through this like in detail because we've seen this time and again, time and again throughout the series. But basically, so we have like all sorts of imports here with Libreza and other stuff that we'll use. Here we are loading some audio files and we're always using the three usual audio files. So a Debussy piece, an orchestral piece, then a song by Red Hot uh, Chili Peppers and then a nice ballad uh, by Duke Ellington. So this is a jazzy music. So here I just like display all of them. I'm not going play this back because like we've heard them like multiple times and if you're interested you can download the uh the notebook and hear for yourself and then what i do here i load all the audio files with libreza so that we get both the uh the signal as a numpy array and the sample rate okay so it's now time to calculate the spectral centroid with libreza now the first thing that I want to do is just like uh, set up the uh, frame size and the hop length and we're going to need uh, these values for extracting the spectral centroid. Okay, so now let's move on and uh, actually extract the spectral centroid. So we'll do a SC, this is like uh, stands for spectral uh, centroid and we'll do uh, Debussy over here. And so what we'll do is a Libreza dot feature and then we'll get the spectral centroid feature. And here we should pass uh, a few arguments. So the first of which is just the signal itself. So we'll do a Y, which stands for signal uh, for in Libreza. And here we'll pass the Debussy signal. So we'll pass Debussy then we want to pass the sample rate and we know that this is equal to SR because we took it here. Then uh, we need to pass the frame size that's called N dash um, N underscore FFT. Uh, and so this is going to be equal to the frame size. And finally, we'll pass in the hop length that's equal to the constant that we uh, just like set over here. Okay, so uh, let me just do the same thing for the three other signals that we have. So for the Red Hot Chili Peppers and for uh, for the two other signals that we have. So Red Hot Chili Peppers song and Duke Ellington song. So this one I'll just call uh, Red Hots and let me pass this guy over here as the signal and then we'll do ISC, so spectral centroid of Duke and I'll pass the signal for Duke Ellington over here. So if I don't have any mistakes, so we should just like run this and get the spectral centroid. Yeah, it seems like it works. Let's now calculate the shape of the features that we just got. So we can do SC uh, BC dot uh, shape and as you can see here, we have a bidimensional array. The first dimension is equal to one and the second dimension is equal to uh, 1292. So the second dimension is uh, equal to the number of frames uh, that we get. So it's all like the, we are like in the time domain and it's all the, the frames that we have there. Okay, but we are mainly interested like in those uh, 1292 uh, values of the spectral centroid across time. So what we should do here is just get item zero over here. So let's do that. And if we rerun this, as you can see, obviously here we are just getting like a one dimensional array which uh, this uh, almost uh, 1300 uh, values and that is like the value for each frame, um, the value of the spectral centroid uh, for each frame. The next thing that we want to do is to visualize the spectral centroid across time for the three uh, pieces of music. Okay, so let's start by just uh, creating some markdown. Say, visualize spectral centroid. Okay, so 
here. So how do we do this? Well, we'll use matplotlib. So the first thing that we'll do is plots dot uh, figure. So we'll create a figure with a given fig size, figure size, and this is going to be equal to uh, 15 or like, yeah, let's say 25 by 10. And then we want to move on and here start adding uh, like the curve. So we're going to have like a single figure with three different curves for the three different pieces that we are analyzing. Okay, so we'll do a plot dot plot. And here we need to pass the value for the x axis, the y axis and a color. Okay, so for the x axis, we need to pass time. So I haven't still calculated that. So yeah, I'll do that like once we have like all of this ready. The for the y axis, obviously, what we want to pass is the the values of the spectral centroid. Uh, and finally, we want to pass the uh, a color. And so for the BC, we'll use a blue. Now let's just add the same thing, but for the other uh, songs. So we'll have like the Red Hot Chili Peppers song here, and this is going to be red. And finally, we'll have like the Duke Ellington uh, piece, and this is going to be uh, yellow like this. And finally, we'll do a plot dot uh, show. Now, as I said, uh, we still don't have time. Uh, so we need just like to, to, to create that. And so we'll create that starting from the frame. Start by getting the frames and we can easily get, get them by doing the length of, well, the range of the length of any of this uh, spectral centroid features. So we'll do, yeah, we'll take uh, the spectral centroid uh, feature for Debussy and we can't use any of this because they all have like the original signals all have the same uh, duration so they'll have like the, the same number of frames. Okay so and then we can build a uh, time here and so we'll do a libro, librosa dot frames to uh, time and here we should just pass the frames like this. Okay, let's do this and see if it works. Well, I have an error. So yeah, this is not figure size, but it is fig size. So yeah, let's work this out. Okay, nice. Okay, so here we have the, uh, yeah, a graph with the three curves for the spectral centroid. Uh, for like Duke Hallington, for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, as well as for uh, the uh, Debussy orchestral piece. So on the x-axis we have time, and as you can probably see, it's difficult, but it's there. We have 30, so this is like 30 seconds worth of uh, data of like a piece. And then uh, here, like on the y-axis, we just have the value of the uh, spectral uh, centroid. And as you can see, the uh, spectral uh, centroid for the red hot chili peppers is overall like higher across time than the same for uh, the Bucy, which is like this curve in blue, and for the Duke Ellington's piece. Uh, now, uh, this is something that is usually the case. So usually like with rock music you tend, or like EDM, popular music, you tend to have spectral centroids that are like a little bit higher than uh, the other like pieces that are, that use, tend to use like acoustic instruments like classical music or like jazz. Okay, so uh, now, of course, like if you don't remember like what the spectral centroid is, I highly suggest you to go check out like this video where I explain like what the spectral centroid is. But in a nutshell, we are talking about the center of gravity, the, the frequency that's the main center of gravity for a piece and it's calculated like for each frame. And so here we have just like a curve that goes through the whole duration of the signal and at each frame we're, we're getting a, a value for the spectral centroid. Okay, so now we can move on uh, to the spectral bandwidth and we can calculate it with uh, Librosa. So let me just write some uh, markdown here. Uh, 
just to keep things neat. So we'll say spectral or yeah, let's say just like calculate uh, band width. Okay, and so here I can easily calculate all of this and so I can just like copy the stuff that we use for uh, the spectral centroid and here instead of like calling the spectral centroid function in liberosa.feature I can call spectral underscore bandwidth. That's all I need to do. And now magically I'm gonna get the spectral bandwidth. Obviously I need to change like the, the name of this variable because we're not dealing with spectral centroid, but with uh, spectral uh, bandwidth. And so I can just like put, uh, yeah, let's put ban, which stands for bandwidth. And we'll do the same thing for the red hot chili peppers signal and for the Duke Ellington signal. and. We need to change this thing to bandwidth, same thing down here. And the rest uh, remains the same because the arguments to spectral bandwidth are the same uh, as those we use for the spectral centroid. So the signal itself, the sampling rate, the frame size and the hop length. And yeah, we need to always like take the, the, the first item, so the item zero. And once we do this, Okay, so here we have like the, um, the the spectral bandwidth like for all of these three signals. Now let's take a look at the shape. And here, once again, you should have, like, yes, this 1292. And this is like a one dimensional array, once again, because we are taking like the item, the, the zero item here, right? And this is like equal. So Basically, what this means is that we have a value for the bandwidth for each frames uh, that we are analyzing. Okay, so now let's move on and just visualize this. And once again, we are going to basically reuse the kit that we just wrote. So we'll do visualize uh, bandwidth. Okay, like this. And then I'm just going to get this stuff over here and we can reuse this and so I'll use the instead of like the spectral centroid Debussy I'm passing the the bandwidth for Debussy for the red hot chili peppers and for Duke Ellington like this and now T remains the same because and well, I, I ask you first thing so just like pause the video and just like think about why like T for the bandwidth is the same as the one that we have for the spectral centroid. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Well, uh, the, the answer is, is super easy and that's because uh, the, the shape is the same. If, if you take a look at this, right? So the shape, so the number of frames that we have like for the bandwidth are the same number of frames uh, that we have like for the uh, spectral centroid. So we can use like the same X axis. So we are using like the same times okay so now let's just uh plot this and as you can see yeah we have like a nice uh yeah the three curves that more or less like resemble uh like the the ones that we have like for the spectral centroid and uh that's because like in a sense like the bandwidth is derived from the spectral uh centroid and it gives us basically like the amount of frequencies that are like relevant that are significant around the spectral uh, centroid and the, the, the kind of like comment that we can uh, apply to this plot and to uh, yeah I would say like to the spectral bandwidth is similar to the one that we had regarding the spectral centroid in a sense like the spectral bandwidth of uh, acoustic pieces like classical music or uh, jazz music tends to be like smaller than the one that we have for um, yeah rock music or yeah music which like electronic instruments usually or percussions for sure okay so yeah this is it so now you're able to calculate the spectral centroid and the bandwidth using uh, Libreza and yeah, I think like that's it for like this video. And I just wanted to, to yeah, 
close like this series like with a few uh with a couple of comments so one thing i think like this was like an amazing ride so we went through a lot of things and if you followed along with like my series now yeah you, you have like a very strong background in audio processing and audio uh features for machine learning so you now know about the difference of like time domain features frequency domain features you should have a very good understanding of the Fourier transform and uh, great understanding about MFCCs, uh, MEL spectrograms, spectrograms, uh, log spectrograms. And so these are all ingredients that are will be necessary for your activity as an AI audio or AI music engineer or researcher. So yeah, congratulate like uh, yourself because uh, you did a lot of stuff if you followed uh, so far. And then a final like personal note, like I was very happy with all the, the feedback that I got, the questions that you guys like asked throughout the series. It was like amazing. Uh, also like the, the feedback that I got like on the Sound of AI Slack channel. By the way, if you want to sign up to that community, you have the uh, sign up link in the uh, description box below. So yeah, I hope like uh, I can continue like to produce I will continue to produce like content like this and get like uh, feedback, positive like feedback uh, from you. And yeah, I think like that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, the series, and you haven't like subscribed yet to the Sign of AI channel, please consider doing so. And uh, if you liked the video, just hit the like button. And I guess I'll see you in the next series. Cheers.